Boys, uh, Port Adelaide are the best story we've seen in a yeah. long time, boys. Uh, they are in incredible form. 18 months ago, uh, it was talk about uh, their demise. 47,000 fans at Adelaide Oval. Here's the uh, the front page of the Adelaide Advertiser in yeah. South Australia. Not getting ahead of themselves. All joy over there. It is, and it should be, because we talked about this last Monday night, about they are the most watchable side in the competition at the moment. And you look at the balance. They've got a great young midfield. They've got athletic defenders, and even yesterday, it was a modest return from Westhoff and Schultz, really, in, in the overall scheme of that game. But they still found a way of kicking a big score against a side that's been one of the best defensive sides in the competition so far this year. Third youngest side in the competition behind Greater Western Sydney and Gold Coast. I mean, yeah. it's quite remarkable what they've done. I've created an aura about their fitness, and let's have a listen to their fitness uh, guru, Darren Burgess, who uh, spoke before the game. I reckon it was about midway through that first pre-season when we came back from Christmas and our 3K time trials were just outstanding and I thought, hello, we, we've got a nice group here, like a really good running group. And they do run, like, yeah. and you can see it here now. That we've highlighted Boak there, right? He goes to that contest in the middle of the ground and then there's a bit of congestion. You see Port Adelaide break from that contest. You see them running to all parts of the ground. He kicks the ball and then just watch this again. He runs forward. You can see White just off to the left there. And then it's Boak who receives the ball in the goal square again. I mean, and that was just indicative of the way they played yesterday. How much of it's mystique, Doug? How much of it is them you know, building their own fitness uh, aura about them and how much of it's real? Oh, I think it's real, but I think Ken Hinckley's been very clever. I mean, we know that they won a lot of last quarters last year, so they were very fit. Came in, making those comments publicly, and all of a sudden the players, and, and they know that they finish well, but all of a sudden they have a feeling of in, they're invincible, basically, mm. especially going into that last quarter. And against a side like Geelong, I mean, uh, yeah, I can't... I mean, and their captain. I mean, that's their captain doing that yeah. too, Tim. No, he was, he, he's become a, a great leader. And it, 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 may be, it may be more than just their own belief in their fitness because we now know the story of uh, Matty White who went from Richmond yeah. to uh, Port Adelaide. Yep. And by all reports, he was one or two in terms of uh, endurance fitness at Richmond. Wasn't in their top six when he got to mm. Port Adelaide. So, I mean, that is a practical example of how fit their players are. Yeah, that's a good point. And uh, as you said, when you start feeling like you're running over the top of sides, you run harder again. And uh, at the moment, that's exactly what they're doing. Ken Hinckley, what a genius. He was around for a long period of time before uh, Port Adelaide uh, selected him as their senior coach. Uh, we spoke with uh, Cameron Ling today and also Danny Frawley on why Ken Hinckley is now a great coach in the AFL. He built really good relationships with sometimes those uh, not, not difficult characters, but um, some, the quirky characters. Let's put it that way. Sometimes the creative geniuses. Um, you know, I'm talking about Stevie and Gazza and these types of players. Port were obviously after a coach, and the, they asked about Ken Inkley, and they said, "Well, Ken's not going to go for a job, but if you want him to coach, he'll do it." And basically that was it. So Ken was not, never going to go for another interview. So Port uh, did their homework and offered the Ken, Ken the job and the rest is history. Yeah, thanks to Tom Brown out and about today. Have they got the best run with player in the game as well at the moment? Uh, yep. yep. I, I, I think they have. I think that uh, Kane Corns, without a doubt, is the best run with player. It doesn't do it every week, Das, but uh, if you have a look at him here, they're the ones highlighted, obviously. Selwood, he, he actually, OK, he's playing on Selwood, but when the ball's there to be got, he gets the ball. Obviously, Selwood can't get it if he's got it in his hands. And that's his theory when he tags. He doesn't do this, mm -hmm. and I know we've spoken a lot about McCaffer, but he doesn't do this hanging on type stuff and blocking space. I mean, it seriously is a case. You see him here, gets knocked over by Selwood, but he goes straight back to him. And then, look, no holding. It's just, it's just mm -hmm. next to him, arm across, let's start again. Here's his numbers compared to and as the other taggers, uh, high-profile taggers in the game. He doesn't do it every week, but he wins a heap of the footy, what oh, and is yep. prepared to... To, to do that. He kept Selwood to under 20 disposals and had uh, you know, 29 himself on, on the weekend. It's he backs pretty, himself, doesn't yeah. he? He does. And uh, the way that they were winning the ball around the congestion, I thought that was one of the more impressive things from Port Adelaide yesterday because I think we all rate Geelong around the contest, but they actually played hard against them and then they spread even better than what Geelong were able to. And just getting back to Ken Hinckley too, yeah, just briefly. I, yeah, I wanted to and talk And that is, I heard him on radio today and he was asked a question about Aaron Young. Aaron Young should have given a handball yesterday, right? He was asked a question, this is on SEN, he was asked a question about whether, or what he, what he said to Aaron Young and, he, and, and will you ask him next time to handball the ball? And he said, I won't be asking him, I'll be demanding 
that he does that. And that and that's how he speaks. He, yeah. he, he's yeah. very direct in what he yeah. has to say. Uh, speaks uh, speaks extremely strongly. The other, I, I said last week that there's not too many coaches in my time have made a difference to their team like Ken Hinckley. And we hear year after year when a new coach gets a team, and you know Damien Hardwick's been at Richmond now for five years, and we, Mick Moldhouse went to Carlton. How long is it going to take for them to adapt to the new game plan? Well, you know how long it takes if you've got a smart team? Not long at all. Ken, mm. It took Ken, uh, yeah. Ken Hinckley, what, six weeks, and Long all of a sudden season. they were playing that type of footy. 